Hi guys, it's Lynn here. I hope everyone is having a fantastic day. Now welcome to our end of end of August cacti and succulent plant polytunnel update. And this is going to be a two-part series. This is going to be our polytunnel update, which is the polytunnel here. And then part two is going to be the yard and little greenhouses. We've got two little greenhouses out here as well, filled with plants, update. So stay tuned for that. I'll probably put these two videos on at the same time and link them both together. But this is the yard, so stay tuned for that video. And today I'm going to be doing the green, sorry, the polytunnel update. And here we are. This is our polytunnel. It's a 20 by 10 feet, uh, 10 feet wide and 20 feet, feet long polytunnel. It's quite a large polytunnel. And this is where we house the majority of our cacti and succulents, certainly in the summer months. During the winter, we do bring some of the ones that are not so hardy into the house to overwinter. And that's when our house is like a complete jungle. Um, and the other ones we keep out here and we put a little greenhouse heater in that keeps it at a minimum of five Celsius, which is about 41 degree Fahrenheit. But um, thankfully this time of year, we don't have to worry about heating. <laughs> we haven't had a very good summer. It's been very wet here in Ireland, but we've had a lot of plants in flower for us, which has been really good news, as you can see there. And what I'm going to be doing here is starting on the right hand side of the polytunnel because there's a lot of plants to get through. And I'm just going to focus on mostly the ones that are sort of in flower and actively growing because otherwise it's going to be a very long video. Now this is my Euphorbia tiracali, commonly known as the pencil cactus. And it's not a cactus, it's actually just a succulent. And a lot of you, lot of you will know that all cacti are succulents, but not all, not all succulents are cacti. And there's loads of new growth on this, so that's a gorgeous, gorgeous big plant plant here, doing very, very well here. Now here we have our mother of thousands plants. We've got three different varieties. This one is the Kalankoe tubiflora, packed with loads of babies. And this one is the Kalankoe degramantiana times tubiflora, which is a hybrid between two of them, which you can see the, the leaves are wider. And then this one here is the Kalankoe degramantiana, which has the big wide leaves, loads of babies growing all around them as well. And they have been flowering, but just not at the moment. And then we have a selection on this table here of a few different types of succulents. Now um, we have here at the back, this is Bucania, Retocarva, and a um, lovely big, lovely big bulbous bulb on that. As you see, it's one of the cordiciform succulents, doing very, very well. We have a little baby one here as well, and some Euphorbias, Euphorbia mammillaris, and um, that is a lovely variegated one that we got from Nelly from Collection of Unseen Nature, doing very well. And this one is one of the Medusa euphorbias as well, growing healthy there. And we have a selection of uh, Pereskias. Now these do look as if they're just a succulent because they're very leafy, but they are actually cacti because they have little areoles where new shoots and flowers emerge from and little spines. Um, instead of thorns, you see you, uh, succulents, just succulents have uh, spines. Um, so they have, yeah, they have spines and um, cacti have, so succulents have thorns and cacti have spines. And if you want to know what the difference is, well, spines and thorns are the same. They're actually not, I'll just show you. That's Euphorbia sudanica there. And that is what um, thorns look like. They just come out from the skin there. But spines are what emerge from an areole or areoli, whatever you want to pronounce it. And that's um, what makes a cactus and a succulent different to um, normal just succulents there. And new shoots will come from there. So this does look very much like a normal succulent. But believe me, it is actually a cactus. And we have a few different varieties. And a lot of them have been flowering for us. There's a seed pod forming on this one here, which is very, very excited to see a seed pod forming on this, on this one here. Different varieties there. And this one here is Prescia godsefiana, the same as this one and this one. And this particular uh, Prescia, I say it's a cactus, as you know, as I've just said, um, it has beautiful golden coloured leaves. And this one is one that I'm actually growing for Josh, for the Grow for Josh project. It is absolutely doing really well at the moment. I pruned it back and it has sent out a load of new growth, so very healthy. And here's a Euph another Euphorbia here, not quite sure of the variety, but I've had this for absolutely years, probably about 25 years, guys. 
And when I got it, it was about that high. <laughs> and as you can see now, it is a big plant. And I so said this Euphorbia Sudonica, commonly used as a grafting plant. They often use this to graft other type of um, plants on top of it, other type of cacti or succulents. Um, this actually was originally as a, as a used as a stock for a plant I had a variegated, a lovely sort of um, Euphorbia on the top that was a lovely purple colour. Um, but that sort of died back and then I kept the, the, the bottom part and it's grown into a beautiful plant over time with lovely leaves. And um, here, this is an Ocotillo there. It's normal for the, some of the leaves to go a little bit yellow sometimes and uh, drop off, but that's doing very well. And a mixture of a few of our little seedlings um, here, Trichocereus and Echeveria here. And here as well is another Ocotillo, a few different varieties mixture of everything really, some euphorbias, this is one of the medusa types there and I'll just show you one of our medusa ones we have as well, a few of the medusa type of euphorbias, there's another one there, they're quite wacky and we have a big um, Trichocereus collection, that's Trichocereus um, nicknamed the penis cactus because of obvious reasons it's quite wacky um, that is very, very different type of cactus there and then we have a mixture of, um, that's actually, by the way, Trichocerus brugesii, monstrosi. That's the correct name of it, but it's nicknamed the penis cactus because it's sort of weird looking. Now we have a few different types of Trichocerus young plants there. We have a lot of big ones as well in the yard, which I'm going to show you in the next video. And here we have a mixture of a lot of different types of Lophophora and Matucanas. These are known as the Mexican cacti. Matucana at the back there. These have been flowering on and off all through the summer and loads more buds as you can see. So very good to see that. And these are our Lophophoras as well, doing very well there. And loads of our little babies. This one is my, my newest addition there that I won on Instagram. <laughs> so I'm very happy about that. That's doing very well. And here we've got some more young little Trichocerus plants and Echinopsis plants. These were gifted to us as cuttings from our friend Stephen from the Cactus Society. So we've planted all them up. They seem to be settling into their new pots well. And this one, the Ulbermania, that's a very unusual type of cactus there. Probably would need to maybe repot that. This one is one I do have to overwinter indoors because it's not cold hardy at all. It needs a minimum of 10 Celsius. And uh, here, Melocactus is the same, needs a warm winter rest period. Now these are a load of young seedlings. Now Hansi, my wonderful fiancé, he, he actually potted up these a few days ago and um, they're doing very well. Loads of seedlings. I've got loads and loads of seedlings I have to repot. I'm going to mention that in a bit. Some more succulents, aeniums there. Um, lovely aeonium selection as you can see. Now this crassula has been absolutely blooming beautiful for days now. Now this is known as the propeller plant and it's called Crassula falcata and I have made a video already on this beauty and it's just absolutely gorgeous. It's been flowering for ages. I'll just show you that's the plant there, very unusual. It's actually top heavy now because the bloom has grown so large. I'm having to rest it on this variegated aenium because I don't want it to topple over. But obviously when that dies back, I'll prune it back um, then. And then mixture then, we've got some euphorbias, um, canariensis seedlings that I grow myself from seed, all these here. And Serapagia sansonii there. Some more epiphyllum, some more trichocereus. As I say, a mixture of sort of succulents and cacti all growing together. Now these are a lot of mostly um, epiphyllum and slumberger, different type of varieties there, as you can see, all different types, all rooting from cuttings. And um, small epiphyllum at the back. These are old um, Crassula ovata jade plants there. Have a few little cuttings also on there too. And um, a lot of succulents, some more cacti here. This is Cleistocactus candelia. candelia. And you see Candelia, it's like a candelabra when you think of how it grows. <laughs> and this Scylla, Violacea, this is a new one for me. So um, this is one I got from a Cactus Society probably a couple of weeks ago. I did make a video when, when I bought this one. And I'm very happy, it seems to be settling in very well here in the polytunnel. Probably be overwintering that indoors, but I've heard, have heard it that it is quite cold hardy. So um, because I'm new to this plant, I think I'm going to over, overwinter it indoors this year. Um, small patchy, uh, patchy phytum there, and uh, Crassula ovata, um, commonly known as the um, golem, Crassula ovata golem, also nicknamed the hobbit as well. This lovely, it's a lovely little tree. This is one of Hans it's had for years. The little baby one there too. This one again is a 
mixture of um, Sansevieria. This is a Sansevieria one there. Another Sansevieria here, and um, it's a mixture of succulents, lithops, plasterpilos, string of tears, string of pearls, <laughs> and then uh, we have here a big mixture of everything. Really, We've got uh, Camasarius, Echinopsis, Rebusha. This is where I have a lot of the smaller growing cacti on this top um, table, to top plant stand here. I have the other the other plants going down, mainly all succulents, a mixture of everything. But obviously, because the, the biggest problem with this polytunnel here is because the sides are sloped, um, you're restricted to putting tall plants on the top. This is why I've got a lot of tall plants here because unfortunately it does cut off space. You can only put mainly smaller plants and that's the biggest problem. Now this polytunnel is only short term. We're hoping to move somewhere we, we can get a bit of a, a bit more space and somewhere we can have a, a proper greenhouse um, as in glass or polycarbonate so it's completely clear. It will let a lot more light into the into the plants. Sorry, a lot more light for the plants. It's going to be much better for them. This green coating that we've got here um, we've only got this people often ask me why have I got a green coating polytunnel it's because it's the only option we had when we got the polytunnel they don't seem to do clear ones um, other than the massive big industrial polytunnels which we, wouldn't be practical in our backyard so this is all we could get but the plants seem to be happy enough but when we do move in the future we want to have me and Hansi want to have a proper greenhouse that's either clear glass or clear polycarbonate so the plants are going to get maximum light I think that is essential these polytunnels are great short Short term but not long term so we have a, a lot of dreams that we want we want to improve here but this is good for the meantime it, you know it keeps the keeps the plants from free from rain and it lets enough light in to keep them ticking along as they say <laughs> and as I say here this is all Echinopsis and Camasarius different varieties there all bit doing well they've all been flowering really well over the summer on and off different different times as I say it's late August now and there's still lots more buds coming up on a lot of the plants, which is good to see. And here, this is just coming into flower as well. Lots more little buds there, just starting to come into flower, which is wonderful. And this one is a crassula, a lovely variegated form. Absolutely beautiful, though, a lovely red coloration. It gets really red in bright sunlight. And the past couple of days have been very sunny, which has been good for here, because we have had a, ter a terrible summer, as I said. But it's really gone lovely and red because of the sunshine. It's been gorgeous. And his Fucaria as well here. And this one, Graptopatile and Filiferm, that's been flowering lovely um, over the past couple of months too. As I say, more, more buds there. This is Camelobivia. So it's good to see buds still at this time of year because usually late, late summer everything starts to sort of dwindle off. But we still have lots more in bud, which is good. See pods as well forming on the um, this Camelobivia there. Now here we've got mostly all succulents. Now we've got a lot of jade plants, different varieties under there. And what I'm going to be doing, possibly in the next month or two, certainly before the winter really kicks in, I'm probably going to be putting a lot of the jade plants into a big bowl like I've done with this one here and potting them all together. So stay tuned for video when I do that <laughs> because that's going to be a bit of a big job, but I'm going to have fun doing that. And it's going to save on a lot of space too. And uh, here to show the succulents here not a lot happening now my echeveria here that's coming into lovely flower that is one of my echeveria setosas that i that is planted up in this lovely little little bowl it does need repotting but because it's in flower it's good to leave it as it is and uh show you down here now a lot of these succulents i have been pruning back so if they look a bit bare like that one there uh, it's not actually as bad as it looks i'm just in the middle of going through all my succulents and pruning them back because they're desperate to be pruned and this actually helps them and i have made a video when i pruned pruned some of my succulents if you haven't seen that video links will be up above um, how to prune succulents and also to take cuttings and that's the good thing you can take cuttings when you prune your succulents and uh, as I say, they're looking a little bit, as you can see there, prune that one, prune that one, which I include in the video. I'm going to be pruning a few more as well, just to get them all tidied up a little bit. And look at that. This one here, I pruned that back possibly a month ago. And this is all the new growth since then, guys. It's unbelievable. And also some of the leaves that I removed when I pruned back the, the top part, I just placed on there, just sprayed with a little bit of, bit of water every now and then. And look at that little babies growing it's amazing how just the leaves would just really send out new growth so these are going to give to 
two friends here. <laughs> so cute to see. And then underneath here, selection more of succulents, calanchoes and echeverias. All. And then we've got some rooting here, some Prescheopsis rooting in water there. Now here are my big euphorbia triangularis and it's huge. <laughs> this is one I got from Urban Plant Life about three years ago and it's doing really, really well. Possibly needs repotting, but it's doing okay for now. Now this stand here, I have all of my aloes, a complete different selection of many, many different aloes, gasterias and hawartias, all on here. Some of these aloes I've grown from seed, as you can see there, that's my aloe arborescens. And this one here is a recent addition, um, an aloe here. And uh, variegated ones, Hawarthias at the back there. Unfortunately, I can't really get in to show you that well because of the camera. Um, but I hope you have a bit of an idea of what I've got there. But many different types, all different types of aloes. And they have been flowering really well for me this year. Um, here, so these have just been recently flowered and as you can see they're coming to the end now, so not the most prettiest. I'm going to cut these back, obviously. That's a Hawarthia there. Um, that is Hawarthia. Um, Emifolia. It's gorgeous to see there. First time flowering for me also. And um, a lot of the aloes are flowered for the first time for me. This one was flowering up until recently. And this is Aloe Astricta. Lovely to see beautiful beautiful plant there and uh, look at that and the reason if you want to know what these sticky labels are <laughs> I made a video the other day um, on labeling plants I want to repot because there's so much I want to do in here winter is just around the corner because I know September is very close and then once October's here it's not a good time to repot so I have so much I want to do. I've just come in here, stick a load of labels on and go, whenever I have five minutes spare, I can come in and say, right, I'm gonna repot that plant because I can see the, the little sticky label on it. So that's just a reminder that this big aloe here needs repotting. There's actually a few in this pot. This is one I, I have grown from seed. This is aloe arborescens. And I've grown it from seed probably about five years ago. It is huge now and definitely needs separating and putting in, into its own individual pot and pots this is the big the big planting there's a few little ones growing around it young ones too and there's a mixture of aloes all growing on that side and then here is our puncher table and we have a mixture of many many different punchers and a puncher cacti commonly known as the prickly pear because of how they look <laughs> and we have a lot of different varieties now this one is an echinopsis this is an odd bod we've got it there because there's space for it and that's the only reason why we've got it there but other than that all these other plants are a punchers and we have many many different varieties guys some i've grown myself from seed as you can see there puncher humifusa all from seed and other ones are sort of ones that we've bought over the years or been gifted as cuttings from people very very happy to see now this is really intriguing me because this one is a cylind cylindra puncher in 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 bricker and i've got a funny feeling that could be a seed uh, sorry uh, this that could be a flower pod i should say because i've never seen that before this is one that was gifted to us from our wonderful friend olga from olga's greenland and I think that could possibly be a flower bud. Fingers crossed. I really hope so. But I don't want to build my hopes up. <laughs> Very exciting if it is. And we have a lot of different punchers. Most, in fact, nearly 99% of these punchers stay outside here in the polytunnel for the winter because they're very hardy. And we, we, they can actually take minus temperatures if they're kept dry. But we keep our polytunnel at a minus, so we keep our polytunnel at a minimum of five degrees Celsius, which is about 41 degrees Fahrenheit, only because we live in Ireland, in Northern Ireland, and it's very damp, especially in the winter. It's a damp climate, high humidity. So we have to keep our, our polytunnel heat a little bit higher temperature than average. If you were living in more of an arid climate, these cacti, um, a punchers can take very cold certainly one two degree without any problems but as i say we have to heat it a minimum of five because the humidity high humidity and cold temperatures will rot cacti even the hardiest of cacti so sadly that's why we do have to heat our polytunnel in winter and the cacti that need a minimum of 10 degrees celsius such as the pilosis 
and um, some of the succulents certainly the euphorbias have to be bought inside the house and that's when our house is like a jungle but I love it <laughs> and um, here are puncher microdays he's lots of new growth on there lovely to see I mean the punches are doing really well now we've not had any flower for us this year but that's hardly surprising because a punchers do need um, a lot of bright sunshine to flower they're very very hard to get to flower in cultivation even in a really high sunny climate so here in Ireland even more of a challenge I have had plant I have had a punchers flower for me before but I haven't had any for the past few years. I have my Brasilia Puncha Basilarius flowers usually every year. That's all in that is all in bud. So stay tuned for that um, when I do my yard video. I'm going to try and put these videos up at the same time. Um, so I'll show you the buds on that. But I think, guys, that's a bud. And my Cylindra Puncha, in was it Imbolica? In in Imbricata. So what do you reckon, guys? I'll be so excited if it is. Ooh. <laughs> so that's your puncher table. Now here we have got a mixture of mostly Echinopsis and um, also some other type of serious cacti here, a few different types and um, Echino, Echino cactus as well here. Um, we, what we try to do with the polytunnel, it is a bit difficult because we are st we are sort of stuck for space. And as I say, the, the sloping roof is a bit of a problem. If this was more of an arch shape, it would be brilliant because we could put taller cacti at the back. But because it is sloped, we can't put cacti that are too tall because this sort of holds it back, you know. Um, but what we do is to, we do try and group most of the cacti that are in similar genus together it's much easier when it comes to caring for them and also aesthetically it looks more attractive when people come and see the polytunnel so um here we have got echinopsis which we keep here these are mostly echinopsis here as i say we have a few that aren't echinopsis some some like pilasticarius and echinocactus as well but we try to have ones that are similar looking all together and uh, they're doing very, very well here. That's a Pilasticarius at the back there. Lovely little little branches on it. That one is actually Pilasticarius. Um, let me just check the name of that now. I always forget. Pilasticarius gunellii, because I often get asked because it has these little arms coming out. It's gorgeous. <laughs> and this is Serious Spiralis. Gorgeous cactus there. We've got two of these. And we've got from Urban Plant Life. Um, from that gorgeous garden centre in Dublin City, which we love. This one here is nicknamed the booby cactus. <laughs> um, because the obvious reasons. Excuse, that's our next door neighbour. <laughs> Talking away there. And um, here we've got birds. And these um, <laughs> Echinopsis cacti have been flowering absolutely blooming beautiful all through the summer on and off with blooms and I pollinated a lot of these and I've got seed as you can see very happy with that there and um, seed pods forming so the seeds really really excited and as I say I've made a few videos when I cross pollinated these plants to get seed and I'm very happy it's been a success but um, lovely to see loads of um, beautiful flower buds forming on these gorgeous Echinopsis cacti but they've been flowering on and off all through the summer very very good here now here we have a Stapelia this is Hansi Stapelia grandiflorus he's had this for many many years now a bit disappointed with these this year because they normally flower every year for us this is my other Stapelia Hirsuta normally flowers but as I say this has been an absolutely horrendous summer like it's been the wettest greatest summer I've ever known here since I've been living and I've been here 13 years in Ireland um, so it has been a bit, a bit of a challenge um, so I'm happy to say we've had a lot flower considering um, so it's no surprise that these have not flowered but sometimes it's not unusual for stapelias to flower sometimes even in September so we're keeping our fingers crossed sometimes plants have a bit of a break in between the years um, but as long as it's healthy that's all that matters now this one is Hunia Shenedirianna, <laughs> what a tongue twister. This one as well is Tiperia Verigata. This was a wonderful um, seed that was gifted to us again by August Greenland. And what's amazing is that when we sowed these seeds, and a puncher just came up in the middle of it. So that's a little odd one, a little interloper that wanted to be here. <laughs> and a mixture of everything here. Look, as I say, loads, 
lots of growth. Now we have had some cacti we've had for a long time that have not really flowered for us this year. We've had some that have flowered for the first time and some that have not flowered, but that's the way it goes with growing cacti and succulents. They're very unpredictable and that makes it more exciting. And it's certainly a challenge because we are here in Ireland, in, in Northern Ireland, which is very grey and very bad summers really, I have to admit. Like I'm, I'm from Birmingham originally in England and we used to get at least a decent summer. <laughs> um, so, it, But this makes it more exciting growing these plants because it's more of a challenge. And when you get them to flower, it is more of a buzz because you know it is definitely more challenging here. Now this one here is Stapelia. So no, this is Houdia, sorry. This is another Houdia. It is actually related to Stapelia family, um, Stapelia CE family. But this is Houdia, which is different genus again. Not sure of the exact type, but this has been in bud. This has been flowering for the past few weeks on and off. Absolutely gorgeous flowers, but they smell terrible like smelly socks. <laughs> but it's good to see lots of buds on this again. And this one here is, is Parodia Magnifica. We have a few in our, in our collection. And they've been flowering. This has been flowering very well all through the summer. As I said, that's a flower, the end of the flower bud there, possibly seed forming, so fingers crossed. Another flower bud there, very exciting. And um, here, this Parodia here as well has been absolutely good. This is, this is um, Parodia Orange Flame. And that's been flowering very, very well. Um, as you can see, that's the end of the end of the little flowers there, seagulls, <laughs> little prodi there, little flower bud. That's been in flower too. That's died off. Another flower bud. And uh, if you want to know what these labels are, that's just a reminder because I need to repot these plants. And I have made a video, probably just a little bit before this one, on making a note of all the cacti and succulents I want to repot in this polytunnel. So do check that video out um, if you haven't done already. <laughs> I've got a lot of work on my hands here. Um, Echinocerius here. Mixture of everything. As I say, I wish I could really do a proper tour around, but I've got so many plants, it's gonna take forever. No one has the time to sit and watch forever all these these plants but when I've got a bit more time I'll do a proper video probably in about two or three parts of showing you all the different types of plants in my collection but they're all doing well but I have to say I do think it's very challenging growing plants in our climate now there's a few there's a bit of space here because I've got plants in the kitchen that I'm repotting at the moment I've got my Mammillaria common era that I'm repotting so that's missing there but that's well that's going to be that's repotting that's why it's not there and also a couple of my other other Mammillarias I'm repotting so I'm going to be making a couple of videos when I do that too and here again that just needs repotting that's what the sticker is <laughs> And here, lovely to see lots of new growth. That's my Asticium hintonii, um, hintonii, and that's loads of new growth on there too. And Neoporteria, Turbinocarpus. This one as well is my Ferrocactus. That's amazing with its lovely new growth on it. Now these are all our Ferrocacti. As I say, we do try and group most of our plants together, so they're sort of in some type of order. Um, when people come to visit us, we like to say, look, that's all the ferrocacti, that's all the echinopsis, that's all the trichocereus. It just makes it easier for people to see. Um, this one here is our gymnocalyceum or gymnocalyceum, calyceum or gymnocalyceum. People say it differently. This has been gorgeously blooming. Look at that, guys. Beautiful blooms. And this one here is another variety. We're not quite sure what this is because it wasn't labelled when we bought it. But it has sort of lovely, lovely whitey pink blooms. Now, when the, when the sun is on here fully, this will open fully, uh, so you'll be able to see the flowers a bit better, but at the moment it's not really opening because the sun's a little bit all over the place. But um, that's gorgeous there, look at that. And this one is our Gymno, Gymnocalyceum um, Baldania. Beautiful blooms there, as you can see. And this one here, not sure of what type this is, but beautiful pink, beautiful pink blooms. And I have made separate videos on these um, that I have already uploaded. Different types here as well. A chino cactus mixed up with a few of the ferro cacti there. Ferro cacti are very difficult to get to flower in cultivation. They usually have to be quite old. Now this particular ferro cactus here, I have had 
for about 30 years guys I got that in my late teens and it sort of went dead at the top I think it probably had an attack of mealybug or something years ago now when I was young and um, it calloused over it healed and sent these pups and that's because if the growing tip is damaged in any form usually by pests then it will send out new little pups growing around the side which is amazing and here more feral cactus as well and gymnocliseums there all doing well and these as a reminder just to repot <laughs> and uh, make sure some aloes there calanchoes now we have here this is Hans's progia leningausii packed with buds now the buds this plant has actually been in bud for a few months and it's not really as you can see there it looks quite as if it's going to open up and form into buds but they haven't really been doing anything they say the weather has been so horrible here in ireland it's a terrible summer gray and wet that um a lot of the plants when we get a few days of sunny weather they'll produce buds but then we get a couple of weeks of just grey wet weather and the, the buds just either drop off or they just go like this, nothing really happens. But we're still holding, we're still keeping our fingers crossed that this is going to flower for us. It's still late, late August, we've got September still and even October can be good. I'd love to see this with a ring of flowers on it guys, just so beautiful. Hans has had this for many, many, many years. It's a beautiful, beautiful pro dear. Um, this this particular cactus was formerly put under notocactus notocactus leningausii and now it seems to be under the prodia category they're changing the names all the time very confusing so there you go that's it there now we have um yeah let me just show you oh there's so much to show you don't know where to start now some jades here in the bowl here Tradescantias that we normally have in the house, but we've got them outside to get the to get extra light for the summer here. A few different types. This is our ZZ plant, <laughs> Zanzibar. Um, this one can take plenty of shade, but it seems to be very happy here in the polytunnel. We have it a little bit under the table, so it's not in direct sun as, as such, but it does very well there. And then here we have our Preschiopsis. Um, this one we've kept sort of growing tall, and the other ones Hansi has pruned back because. They were looking a little bit lanky and it's good to give them a good pruning. Loads of new growth coming from here. Again, Preschiopsis is often, often com confused as being just a succulent and not a cactus, but it's 100% cactus because this um, plant has areoles, as you can see there are areoles, um, where the spines come out of. Um, new shoots as well. This has been really new shooting. And these are all the cuttings here that we gift into friends. <laughs> and... Um, yeah, I've got all the aloes to show you here as well. Gosh, there's so much, guys. Um, and I try to keep the video as quick as possible because I know that you're short for time. I'll come back to this in a minute. Now, here we have all our seedlings that I've been growing from seed. A mixture of Astrophytum, um, Echinopsis, Trichocereus, Mammillarius, um, other different type of Trichocereus, Apunchus. These are all mostly seeds from our own plants. Um, if not from close friends plants as well and stay tuned for future videos it's probably going to be September now because time is just running away with me when I repot um, pot on I should say a lot of these little seed little cactus seedlings they deserve to have their own little pots so stay tuned for future videos when I do that here as well this is a load of um, Craptobatalum and Echeverias in this big basket here. Uh, going to be pruning these back possibly as well. If it's a bit late in the year for me to do this, I'll probably get this done next year. They're not going to hurt like that. Just looks a little bit overhanging. But other than that, they're very healthy. This one here is a lovely Echeveria. I adore this beauty. Um, this one here is Paul. Um, Paul von... Um, it's one of the lovely purpley coloured ones. But this is absolutely beautiful. And here, another one of my Calanchoe tubifloras, absolutely packed with beauties. Beautiful little babies on there. And um, this one is my um, Echeveria, Echeveria Metallica, as it's nicknamed. I don't think I'll prune that back because I sort of like it looking like that. And um, as I say, I've made a video on how to prune succulents if you want to know how to prune them. And I probably have to do this before winter kicks in. But part of me says leave it till next spring now. Um, and there we go, and I'm going to show you what we've got in the bottom. This is Clerodendrum, Thombosii. These are all that Hansi took from cuttings. As, as you can see, we've got this here because that helps them grow up, but we're actually going to be selling these for um, part of our, bit of our plant nursery um, to local sellers here. Unfortunately, we can't sell to people outside of the UK 
um, an island because it's just a bit of a nightmare with postage and things like that. Um, I've had to put my whole plans for Cactus Nursery completely, certainly on hold because of that. I've had a lot of problems with it and also with Brexit lurking around the corner. I don't know what's going to happen with that. Gosh knows. But anyway, <laughs> um, these here, um, Trochocereus as well, more Pylocereus there, Trochocereus and and more trichocereus and this one is stenocactus commonly known as the organ pipe cactus that's a big cut in there they've got root in loads of new growth so that's taken very well and here we've got pelagoniums these are all baby cuttings uh, that we've took from our own pelagoniums that are out in the yard and uh, there again we're going to be selling to local sellers here in uh, in northern ireland and then here we've got here um, some more Sansevieria. This is Hans's very old Sansevieria. He's had for absolutely years, and it flowered um, flowered last year with gorgeous scented blooms. Really beautiful, heavily scented. And um, here yucca. This is gifted to us from our lovely friend Olga from Olga's Greenland. <laughs> and here this particular. Aloe is aloe arborescens. This is one that Hans has had that he brought over from Sweden. He's had for absolute years. Very old plant. And this one is the true aloe vera as well. Very, very old plant for many, many years. And that's it. And these begonia pictures, they're going to be sold as well. And I have to say, excuse, excuse the lawnmower, guys. We've got nowhere to put it other than in, in the polytunnel, so it's a bit unsightly, but there it goes and then all the pots underneath and that's pretty much it we have here now this plant is normally out in the yard this is one of my ripsalis but i took it in because i say we've had a lot of rain lately and i didn't want it to get too wet and this one is packed packed with loads of flower buds there absolutely gorgeous and um, just show you the flowers are very very tiny i don't know if i can actually show you it's forming sort of seed pods now um, which is very very exciting as you can see there it's going to be seed on this this beauty this is ripsalis it's one of the uh, ripsalis bacchifara um, subspecies corrida um, it's one of the thicker stemmed varieties of um, ripsalis and we have a lot of ripsalis out in the yard which i'm going to show you in part two which i'm going to link these two videos together and i'm hopefully going to put these two videos on at the same time so um, you'll be able to see them both and that's pretty much it <laughs> and uh, as i say a mixture of everything there's a lot to show you and i hope you enjoyed the cactus and succulent plant polytunnel end of august update and stay tuned for part two of the yard and guys thank you so much for watching all your support and if you're if you're new to cacti subs and new to the hobby and you want to know how to grow these amazing plants please do check out my website desertplantsofavalon.com and um, do hover your mouse over the growing tips and it'll be a drop down bar a different section on how to care for these plants so do check that out guys and i thank you again for watching so i want to send you loads of love heaps of happiness and tons and tons of cactus and succulent plant power from across the Emerald Isle. And until the next video, bye.